Good morning, everyone. Michael Carter, Jr. with Virginia State University Small Farm Outreach Program. It's now in 10.04. Today we'll go ahead and start with our program today of our SBA Lender Roundtable. Again, I'm Michael Carter, Jr. with Virginia State University Small Farm Outreach Program. Small Farm Resource Center Coordinator. I welcome you all to the call this morning. Uh, we listen to all great opportunities that SBA and other financial institutions uh, to assist small farmers will provide for us and can possibly provide for us to share with us today. Um, pleased to have uh, my friend Martin Short back on from U.S. Small Business Administration. Uh, I know he's a popular guy now. Uh, they've been doing <laughs> a lot of work to try to help small businesses. Um, I know I've, I've appreciated their work and their efforts and I'm thankful for SBA and their uh, contributions to small businesses. Uh, definitely is needed. Um, so hopefully, Mr. <clears throat> Mr. Short will be able to show us uh, what programs are still available uh, and how we can take advantage of them as small farmers uh, because our farms are businesses. Um, so without further ado, I'll present Mr. Short, SBA. Hey, thanks a lot, Michael, for uh, um, inviting us and, and, and putting this together. We do it, we do this with Virginia State on a a regular basis, um, I guess maybe at least may, maybe two or three times a year. So our goal is to inform uh, our clients, uh, farmers, the general public about small business and how we're here to help and the resources that are available. And, and, and that's pretty much the goal. And that's what we want to see happen is folks get the information, they start a business, they become successful, and then they're able to create some jobs and opportunities for others. So that's what it's really all about. So what I'm going to do is share my screen now, and I'm going to go ahead and get started in the, um, with my presentation. And then we're going to go on and talk about um, um, Farm Bureau, Farm Credit, I'm sorry, with Ms. Bell and, and Ms. Lorette Tucker from USDA Rural Development. So um, this is going to be a great, exciting program here. So let's go ahead and get started. Okay. Can you see my screen? Can everyone see the screen? If not, just raise your hand or somehow get my attention. I think that's the way this pretty much works. And so, uh, the SBA, what we essentially do is that we, we help people start businesses, we help them grow, we help them expand and recover. And that's that kind of puts us in a nutshell here as to what we we're really all about. Um, our platform consists of four core functions. Uh, one is counseling, the other is contracting, the third one is capital, and the uh, last one is disaster. So disaster is a big piece that we've been talking about. So when you hear about idle PPP, that's that's where we are right now as, as it relates to our disaster platform. And so let me talk a little bit about both um, platforms, if I if I may. Okay, so we have a network of partnerships. Um, <clears throat> you've heard of probably SCORE, SBDC, WBC, uh, VBOC. They actually do a lot of the heavy lifting for us. And so our network is composed of uh, maybe 1,400 different networks or partners, I say, I should say. And just talk a little bit about SCORE. SCORE is a service core of retired executives. They offer free counseling, free mentoring, um, free online workshops. If there is a cost for a workshop, it's a very minimal cost, and that that cost is probably relative to uh, what they have to pay for materials. Um, there's a there's a piece there where you can connect with them in terms of their location and their phone number and their email address, um, and that's pretty much how we are working today. Uh, uh, and there are no really physical locations or everything. A lot of things are done virtually, but they have a virtual platform that's really um, current and uh, it, it works quite well. So it's easy to connect with them. You can call them or you can shoot them an email. SBDC does, this, does the same thing. 
Um, here is a local contact uh, in Petersburg. Uh, we don't have one in Richmond. Hopefully we'll, we'll get an office in Richmond pretty soon, but they do essentially the same thing as SCORE. Um, low cost training, free business consulting for how long you need it. And, and they uh, are one of our primary, <clears throat> I guess, partners when it comes to people who are looking to, to borrow money. They actually have the software to, to pull up information and, and do financial projections that you're going to need in developing of that, that business plan. So um, SBDC, Small Business Development Center. And I'm going to talk a little bit just about WBC. That's the Women's Business Center. They do the same thing. They provide free counseling and, and they offer workshops. Now, one unique thing about the WBC, the Women's Business Center, is that they uh, try very hard to address the unique challenges that some women may face entering into the business world. Um, but they don't, <clears throat> they're not exclusive to women. They, they, they uh, meet with everyone. Um, but they, again, they try to address some of those unique challenges that women may face uh, entering the business world. And the VBOC. So if you're getting out of the military, you're retiring, you're transitioning, the VBOC is here to help you. Um, they are connected with the TAP Office the Transition Assistance Program, and they provide free training, workshops, uh, just as the other three uh, resource partners I mentioned. And they're located down in uh, Norfolk, and ODU is the host organization. Okay, we have a contracting program. And so if you have an interest in buying uh, or selling to the government, I should say, selling to the government, uh, we have a uh, contracting, a couple, three contracting programs that can address that. And so we buy a lot of goods and services the government does from, from all over. And so it's an excellent way to get into um, the contracting platform, learning the landscape, understanding how to compete uh, on that platform. Um, and one of the things that you have to have been in business for a couple of years, um, we do have a resource partner, uh, PTAC, that um, um, can help you uh, get on board uh, with that. That's the Procurement Technical Assistance Center. Um, and we have one located. We have numerous, a number of uh, locations throughout the state. Um, just to talk a little bit about the uh, four programs, the 8A Business Development Program, and that's a nine-year program. The first five years, we're looking at uh, getting you uh, skilled up and, and trained in the, the, the business and understanding the, the, the government contracting landscape. And in addition to that, um, competing, so you may have a sole source, or you may have uh, um, a woman-owned type of uh, uh, requirement. And so the 8A program is ideal because the first five years are for uh, you getting involved and engaging and competing for contracts and maybe even getting some sole source contracts. And then the last four years are designed for you to uh, prepare to wean yourself off of the program to transition out and that you're self-sustaining and you're able to navigate the whole government contracting piece um, on your own. And it's not just federal contracting that, that the PTAC can assist you with, it was state and local as well. Uh, then we have a women-owned uh, small business designation program and we have the service disabled veteran-owned program designation. And so if you're military or you're, you're, you're service disabled connect, um, you'll get some preference there. And the same thing if you if you're a woman and and you know the 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 law states that all twenty that twenty three percent of all prime government contract dollars have to go to um, one of these programs and so it's just not for your major uh, contractors or we call them primes that that get the business they they have to follow this requirement as well and then it comes along the mental protege program let's say you are a a electrical company and, and you can and get on board with a prime contractor. And so what that is, is a mental protege and you're, as they go along, they're training you and providing you with resources and, and teaching you about uh, government contracting um, from their perspective. So 
it's an excellent way to to get ramped up and get engaged and 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 get some contracts from that prime contractor. I guess the biggest piece is that you're able to learn and grow as they as they grow and continue and expand. Okay. And I mentioned the PTAC, the Procurement Technical Assistance Center. This one happens to be located in Petersburg, Virginia. Um, if you're in the, Met, the Richmond Metro area, um, you can connect with them, give them a call, um, or, or shoot them an email, and they can help you get started with uh, uh, involving yourself in government contracting. Now, we always get the question, well, how can I get the money, or where is the money located? So um, we have pretty much four types of uh, lending programs. Um, I'll say um, one is SBA back loans and the private investors and research and development and surety. So we go to the next, we'll go to the next slide. And one of the things that I feel I have to say to folks, or I'm compelled to say is that, you know, there really aren't any grants, at least I haven't seen, and we don't have any, the SBA um, is for research, excuse me, for for-profit businesses. Now, we do have grants for research and development, R&D, okay? If you have this particular um, device or a nugget or widget or whatever the case is that can really have an impact on business and can be scaled, um, but it needs some, some more, uh, I guess, research and, and further development, there are grants for that. Uh, we don't loan money directly. Okay, we do not loan money directly. That's important to know. So let's give, let me give you an example of how this works in a nutshell. Let's just say you wanted to um, access some capital. Let's say $100,000. You go to one of our lenders. Let's say it's whether it's a Bank of America, Wells Fargo, or it's a credit union that, that is in our portfolio, or it's true. It's whatever the case is. There are quite a few lenders and you um, get approved, or they approve you for a loan for maybe $100,000. What happens then is that, and once we are, once we approve the bank to loan that money based on our guarantee, it then goes to you. What we're saying, if that, that loan cannot be repaid, or for some reason they no longer can make payments, the SBA is going to um, back the bank meaning the bank will get some of its money back. Okay, that's how that works. So we're like an insurance agency or a guarantor. And that's pretty much how loan programs work. A lot of other agencies do the same type of thing. Um, one of the most commonly used loan programs is the 7A. And that one covers whether it's a startup, whether it's an existing business looking to expand, whether it's the purchase of a real estate or inventory, that loan covers a, a wide range. So it's our flagship loan program. <clears throat> it goes up to $5 million. Um, and, and that's typically um, the one that most people fall into. Now we do have another one that's called the SBA Express Loan, which is, is a faster approval. And that's essentially what it is. That's why it's called Express. And it's, it goes up to 350. And then we have the 504 loan program and that goes up to $5 million. So let's say for an example, with the 504 program, that's pretty much a, a three-party stake uh, or a partnership. So you will have a uh, lender, and the lender loans uh, 50%, and then you have a CDI um, or CDFI, uh, Community Development Financial Institution. <clears throat> they'll, they'll chip in. Uh, or loan out um, another maybe loan out that forty percent, and then the the lender has uh, excuse me the borrower has to uh, put up come up with ten uh, percent. Uh, with this, it's it's more of a community development, economic development type of uh, a loan program because it has a requirement it has to produce X number of jobs. But the the arrangement and the uh, partnering of it is really great. And so it can be part of your overall combination. So it can be the 7A loan program and the 504 loan program um, bundled together. Then we have the micro loan program, which can max out at 
$50,000. I mean, you can borrow up to $50,000. Um, that sometimes comes with maybe a little high interest rate. and, and, and But it does help open up um, your business being launched. Um, one of the requirements is that uh, folks receive technical assistance, TA. And that loan program may require you to get uh, business counseling from one of our resource partners. Okay. And as I mentioned, that micro loan, and here's some of the, some other additional bullets that, that may uh, be of uh, uh, help to you. So it does require lower debt payment um, in terms of competitive, and the overhead requirements are, are um, flexible. And as I mentioned, that TA counseling and education. Okay, and I mentioned earlier about our prog uh, 7A program and, and the uh, 504. These are just a list of things that these loan proceeds can be used to, to, to buy or to use. And so um, it pretty much covers a wide gamut of, of, of the, what the proceeds can go towards. And when you're talking with a lender, um, they definitely want to see a business plan. They definitely want to see uh, that you have a story on paper, a plan that is going to be executable, that's realistic, and that you in that plan, you're, you're going to be solving someone's problem or meeting someone need, someone's need. Uh, in that plan, they're going to want to see projections, expense expense sheets, financials, financial projections, as I just mentioned. Uh, and that's a big piece. So with like going to one of the resource partners, they help with that in great deal because they have the software systems that can really drill down into these numbers and, and really tell a story, a financial story of what this can possibly become. Okay, I'm gonna go to the next slide here. Um, Linda Match. Uh, this is a, a tool on our website that you can go to and, and you can plug in information. Um, you can tell, your, tell the lenders what you're trying to do. And also, <clears throat> you'll get a reply of some sort if there's a lender interested in, in talking with you. So it's a good way to kind of vet your idea if it's a brand new uh, startup. Um, if not, you're looking for um, a loan to expand your business. So it's a quick and easy way to connect with uh, potential lenders. So a very good tool. You can find it on our website, website at sba.gov slash lender match. Also, if you um, are looking for um, an investor or investors, I mean, we have what was called the SBIC, uh, Small Business Investment Companies. And, and what that is, uh, these are companies that have signed on with SBA to possibly invest uh, in a business. And of course, they've been vetted and examined. And so there's an opportunity there. Uh, this is probably great for if you have a tech business. And also, it's good for um, bringing on some expertise um, in, in a particular industry. So if you have a tech business and you have a software program of some sort that um, can be of value in the future, there may be an investor there or investment company there for you. Again, I mentioned earlier about research and development. And that what that does is it gives you uh, some funds to further your your um, product line or really study it a little bit more, research it, develop it. And so they're, they're grant funds for that. Now I'm gonna talk about uh, disaster a little bit. So for example, we have just right today, we have a storm down in, uh, down in the Gulf, uh, Louis, Louisiana. So if there's a presidential declared disaster, that's when we come in. 
And, and, and there's a good percentage of businesses that don't reopen after sustaining a disaster. What we also have going on is a pandemic with the coronavirus. So that's, that's classified as a under disaster program as well. And under our disaster loans, this is the unique piece about it. We loan directly. We're in with the 7A program or our standard loan programs, we uh, back the money. But in this case, you apply for a disaster loan, the money comes directly, a check comes directly from us to you or from the treasury. And so that disaster loan is, is designed to help businesses of all sizes, homeowners, renters, uh, nonprofits. And so those proceeds can address real estate, personal property, economic injury, um, equipment, et cetera. Now, just to talk to you a little bit about the IDLE program, which this came about when, let's see here. This came about in April pretty much or the last of March. I should say the idol came in the last of March and then PPP followed that uh, paycheck, uh, paycheck, excuse me, paycheck protection program. Um, the idol was kicked out or kicked off, I should say, like uh, in the March. And so it's designed for small businesses and for private nonprofits. Um, you can see the interest rate there is like three and a quarter and, and, and two and a quarter for nonprofits, or private nonprofits. And there's a firm period of, of, of 12 months and the maturity is up to 30 years. This is a program that is being heavily utilized. It's of high demand. Um, we did quite a few webinars on them back, uh, I would say through April, May and June. As a matter of fact, we did three to four per day, and we did three to four per day for PPP. The other people are still applying. Um, in this case, we had a segment of that loan program that was only uh, that only allowed for farmers or people in the agricultural industry to apply, and that was done to kind of kind of get them in the pipeline as well because of the backlog, the high demand. And so our customer service department has been working um, diligently and, and working 24 seven to address the needs of the clients. Um, I also wanna add that this falls under the Office of Disaster Assistance. Some folks think that uh, this goes to the district office. I'm in, the, I'm in the Richmond district office. We don't handle this. This is handled by a department inside of the agency. Uh, we call it ODA, as I said, Office of Disaster Assistance. So they manage the IDLE program. And, and so we are still receiving a lot of applications. Um, unfortunately, there's a backlog, but yeah, if you have any questions in reference to this, uh, do not hesitate to give me a call. And my contact information is gonna be at the end of this presentation. Okay, and if you want to apply for the IDLE, here's a, uh, here's a link. Okay, and for questions, specifically related questions to the IDLE program, here's the phone number and here's the customer service email address as well. Here's my contact information. And you can reach me at that cell number since we're no longer, right now we're in the office, we're not in office and we're working virtually just as, as many others are doing. You can reach me there and you can reach me via email. Now with the PPP, that program ended on August the 8th, and it ended with uh, about $130 billion, somewhere around that number, $138 billion still left in the pot. pot. I'm not sure if that's going to come back around. I'm thinking that it may open back up since that money's been allocated, but we'll have to wait and see based on what our, um, our uh, lawmakers decide here. And so that, that remains as to uh, be seen, um, that was utilized, and the whole intent of that program was to keep people on the payroll, okay, for an eight-week period, and then it was extended to a 24-week period, and so a lot of a lot of those funds were used, um, but there's still money in the pot. But unfortunately, the program is uh, has been closed. So again, it may open back up. 
Um, if you have any questions for me, feel free to give me a call at that 803-626-2143 and at that email address too. And so at this point, I think we're going to move forward with um, farm credit. Um, and Rachel, are you there? Hi, Ian. Can you I, hear me? Yes, I, I can. I can. I can. And so you're going to talk about your uh, programs and what Farm Credit offers. And I'm going to pass it on to her. And I guess we're going to pass the ball in such a way that we can put your screen in front here and they'll see your, your presentation. Is there anything gonna, I need to I just got to do a general overview just to kind of give everyone an idea of the terms and kind of financing we can offer. Um, and I can also send out some references and additional resources if anyone needs them. Um, but just to kind of give everyone an idea, I work for Farm Credit. Um, some local offices we have are going to be, um, we have an office in Mechanicsville, Goochland, Tappahannock, and also in Dinwiddie are going to be the closest offices for people. Um, we are structured as a member-owned cooperative, and we are uh, founded to work with farmers. We actually don't have to work with full-time farmers, so if you are just part-time or you're starting your own operation with vegetables, livestock, whatever it is, um, we should be able to help. Um, kind of the main things that we offer are going to be financing for land and lot purchases. So if you are looking to start an operation and buy some land to go with it, we have quite a few options there. Typically, we are limited to 80% financing, but if you do have some farming experience, we can also work with FSA through their Guaranteed Lender Program, and that can help get you some additional assistance um, for the down payment um, or even cover the down payment in some cases. Some other things that we can finance are going to be machinery and equipment for your operation. Um, and then finally, we also offer operating lines of credit, and those can be used for livestock purchases, operating expenses, um, or anything else that you might need to cover for your business kind of as you're getting started. So those are kind of just a general overview of the types of financing that we can offer. And if anyone does have more specific questions on the areas we can cover or specific loan requests, I'd be happy to answer those later on. Okay, thank you so much, Rachel. Um, really appreciate that. Um, Lorette, Ms. Lorette Tuck of USDA Rural Development, are you ready to go online? Yes, sir. Okay, are you gonna put up, uh, are you gonna share your screen or you have a presentation PowerPoint? I don't have a PowerPoint, Martin. I'm just gonna go over a couple of programs briefly. Sounds good. Please take it away. All right, thank you. So good morning, everyone. My name is Laurie Tucker. I'm a rural business specialist with USDA Rural Development. I'd like to thank VSU and um, SBA for including us um, in this morning's presentation. Um, USDA Rural Development, we basically uh, have programs that's going to serve the rural areas of the state. Um, we are broken up into three major uh, divisions. We have a housing division um, where uh, low, media, low to very low to uh, moderate income persons can take advantage of that program to have a home um, purchased or built. Um, we also have a multifamily housing um, component in that program. We have a rural utilities division uh, primarily for nonprofit entities, towns, counties, municipalities that's interested in getting um, uh, crucial uh, community facilities um, built. So we're looking at hospitals, rescue squads, fire stations. And also in that rural utilities program, there is a water and waste division. My division, Rural Business Cooperative Programs, primarily finance, I'm, I'm sorry, administer about 14 different programs at the state level. Uh, today, I like to concentrate on four programs. Typically, we don't work with agricultural production, 
but of these four programs, three of them agricultural producers can actually participate in. First, I'd like to go over a couple of the guaranteed loan programs that we administer. And as Martin said, we don't lend directly. So like the SBA program, we are working with lenders. The lender actually becomes our client. So the small business would approach the lender, the lender would come to us. So the first program, which is one of our staple programs, is the Business and Industry Guaranteed Loan Program. We commonly refer to that as a BNI program. So that program uh, was designed to just bolster the availability of private credit by guaranteeing loans for rural businesses. We work directly with lenders who can be state or federally chartered banks, farm credit entities, savings and loans, and those uh, credit unions. In this program, we are working directly with profit businesses, uh, nonprofit businesses, cooperatives, federally recognized tribes, public bodies, or individuals. As I stated earlier, all projects, all businesses must be located in an eligible rural area. For purposes of our program, that is basically any area other than a city or town that has a population of 50,000. Um, or less. The borrower's headquarters, of course, may be in an in a, a urban area, but the project must be in a rural area. In this program, uh, we are financing needs of a commercial business. But that could include uh, business expansion, purchasing a business, working capital, inventory, uh, personnel expenses, equipment, etc. Some of the ineligible uses in this business and industry guaranteed program, uh, we cannot make loans to churches or church controlled organizations, for channel organizations, for golf courses, racetrack gambling entities, or for lines of credit. So the loan is to the business. The lender would come to us. Uh, collateral would be required that would be sufficient to protect the interest of the lender and the agency. Uh, there are maximum guarantee um, percentages depending on the amount of the loan. The loan terms, they are set by that lender, but typically we go up to 15 years or the useful life for equipment, 30 years for real estate, and working capital not to exceed seven years. Uh, we do take the discounted collateral value. Interest rates negotiated uh, between the lender and the borrower. Uh, the fees, there is an initial guarantee fee that the agency can charge that lender. The lender must, and I'm sorry, the business of course must have realistic repayment ability. And as Martin said earlier in his presentation, the guarantee program basically is somewhat of insurance. It cuts the risk for the lender. And our goal is to have lenders uh, make loans in the rural areas. How do you get started? Applications would be submitted to us from that lender. Uh, we don't have offices throughout the state. Rural business is somewhat uh, centralized. So you can contact me and I can get you over to our lead BNI specialist if you have uh, specific questions today that I cannot answer. I want to jump over now to the Business and Industry CARES Act Guaranteed Loan Program. So this program was authorized by the Coronavirus Aid, Relief, and Economic Security Act, commonly referred to as CARES. It mirrors the BNI program that I just mentioned. However, in this program, the main 
one of the main differences is we can actually make a loan uh, to an agricultural producer. Typically, the BNI program, as I stated, we cannot do agricultural production, but in this program, it's still a guaranteed program, but the, we can guarantee loans made by a lender to a farmer. And, and, and some other differences in this program is the loan for this program must be used to prevent, prepare, or respond to the coronavirus. Another stipulation, the business that makes application must have been in operation on February the 15th, 2020. The agricultural producers um, and the nonprofit entities, they are eligible businesses. And the only way though that we can guarantee a loan to an ag producer in this BNI CARES program is if the agricultural agricultural producer is not eligible for a product of the Farm Service Agency. So if they can get a loan through the Farm Service Agency, we would still not be able to work with them in this program. This program is strictly for working capital. You will not be able to purchase uh, machinery, equipment, construct buildings, etc. in this being I payers program. Uh, this program uh, is basically based on the cash flow analysis. Um, it cannot be greater than the amount that would be needed to cure the financial difficulties caused by the COVID-19 pandemic. The collateral value in this program just must be equal to the loan amount. It does, doesn't necessarily have to be discounted as it would be in our general BNI program. In this program, all guarantees will be 90%, where in the BNI regular guarantee, it fluctuates. The maximum loan term is 10 years. Principal and interest can be deferred for up to three years. This program, uh, will be the BNI CARES money will be in place until it's expended, but we are expecting it to go at least through September of 2021. So that is just an overview of the BNI CARES program and the differences between it and our BNI Guaranteed Loan Program. You also heard Martin say that rarely do you stumble across a grant for a profit-making entity. And he is exactly correct. Grants are typically, as we have seen, for nonprofit entities. Uh, but since we're providing resources for farmers, uh, USDA Rural Development actually administers two grants where agricultural producers can take advantage of. Now, these grants, of course, will not help with operational expenses or um, business startup, but they're very specific. One of these grants, the Value Added Producer Grant. So if you are an agricultural producer and you're looking to venture into a value added activity, this program could possibly assist you. The agricultural producer, um, like I said, is looking to change its commodity into a value-added product. So that could actually be a change in physical state. So the commodity is a tomato and now they're making tomato paste, uh, tomato sauce. Um, this grant can pay up to 50% of the total project cost with the applicant matching 50% for the processing and marketing of that value-added product. Change in physical state is only one of the definitions of value added. If a producer is organically certified, they too would be considered an eligible, uh, or that too would be considered an eligible um, definition of value added. Uh, locally produced food product. So if this producer is selling its vegetables within 400 miles of the farm, 
they too would meet the definition of value added. One of the main stipulations in this program is that applicant must be producing the majority of the commodity. You can't purchase your vegetables and then change them and sell. You would have to be producing the majority of them. Uh, this grant doesn't pay for any hard cost items, no buildings, equipment, uh, vehicles, but the soft cost items. So it can pay for your personnel that's uh, producing the commodity. It can pay for the supplies needed. It can pay for website development. Only soft cost items. Uh, that program, if you have any questions, I am your direct contact for that program. We're just finalizing awards, and so we would expect this program to be announced late this year or early 2021. The second program is the Rural Energy for America program. This program would allow agricultural producers or rural small businesses to take advantage of a grant. The grant would pay up to 25% of the total eligible project cost for having a renewable energy system, such as a solar system, wind turbine, uh, geothermal system installed, or if there is an operation that needs energy efficiency improvement. Uh, for example, we worked with poultry producers, replacing the lighting in their poultry houses or putting in fans um, or curtains. Uh, an energy efficiency proposal would require uh, an audit. So there are actually two grants that producers can take advantage of. And I think I'll just stop right there, Martin, and turn it back over to you. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Lorette, um, really appreciate that information. It's great information. And let me just share something else with everyone. You know, the, the SBA and other federal agencies do quite a, quite a, how should I put it? Similar things, very similar offerings. Um, for example, I think USDA, your loan program may go up to maybe 25 million, whereas our goes up to 5 million. Uh, at max. Is that correct, uh, Lorette? Yeah, that is correct. And I'm glad you brought that up, Martin. I was uh, going to say we don't compete with each other. We're partners no. and we like to work together. Um, SBA has a more streamlined process for some of their loans. So if applicants approach us, and particularly if they have smaller loans, we uh, willingly ask them or suggest that they actually come to you guys. Great, great. Uh, Lorette, we have a request of you, and we uh, someone just put in a chat box, can they get your contact information? Could you please provide us with that? Yes, I sure can. So you can reach me at 434-392-4906, extension 125. My email address, I will spell it out. It's L A U R E T T E dot Tucker at USDA dot gov. Again, L A U R E T T E dot Tucker, T U C K E R at USDA dot gov. Okay, Lorette, I'm going to type that into the uh chat for the uh, the uh, question the person who questioned of or, or asked the question I should say okay I guess it's time now to open up for uh, any potential or possible questions anything anyone wants to ask um, about our, our programs and how we carry them out uh, if you want to talk about something interesting or or business related that's maybe not directly um, about lending, you're welcome to do so as well. Um, in all the webinars that I engage, I wanna make sure we're putting out good information, we're putting out valuable information, and we're helping people succeed. Because at the end of the day, this is about economic development, 
It's about workforce development and certainly it's about the creation of jobs. So we have, I believe, one other question in the uh, chat box. I don't, okay. We are a new company making farming equipment, agriculture spraying drones. Are there any loans or grants available to us? So that may fall within, I think that falls in your wheelhouse, Lorette, and, and maybe in your wheelhouse too, Rachel. Um, again, the question is, we are a new company making farming equipment, agriculture, spraying drones. Are there any loans or grants available to us? I like the drone part. I fly, I fly a drone as a hobby. So um, I'm interested to hear a little bit more about that. So go ahead, Lorette and, and, and Rachel, if, if you have a response or who wants to go first on that one? This is Laureate, and yes, uh, the production of equipment, that's a commercial business. Um, as long as you, you are in an eligible rural area and you meet all of the other requirements, I do believe that's something that we would be able to entertain in our business and industry guaranteed loan program because it's not agricultural production. And that would require you approaching a lender but we'll be more than happy to talk with that lender, particularly if they're not uh, familiar with our guarantee program. Okay, okay, great. Um, Rachel, is there anything you want to add to that or yeah. is that maybe not something you guys uh, address under your uh, offering of services? So that is something that we're actually able to help with financing. Right. As long as an agribusiness is going to be involved with farm products or helping local farmers um, produce a product, it is something that we can help with. We do have a commercial loan group and they handle some of our larger requests. So we do have loans with several farm equipment dealerships already. And that is something that we could help with. Fabulous, fabulous, thank you. And I'm um, sorry, my email is rbell at colonialfarmcredit.com. Great. Are there any other questions? Well, let me just share with you guys some of the things that we're doing at the SBA. We're trying to definitely uh, increase our reach. And we're trying to uh, do that with a level of frequency so that people are getting the information. Um, we have a radio program that's going on every Wednesday. Uh, it's called SBA Wednesday. Uh, it's on WJFM, JWJFN. That's here in Richmond. So you're welcome to tune in at one o'clock and, and you can call in and ask questions. Um, actually, the name of the show is on the mic with Mike King. And so that's one of our ways where we're trying to increase our um, um, information distribution. And so please tune in and you're welcome to give me a call. Um, I think we have a few more questions here, looks like. Okay, well, I thought so, but Rachel just provided you guys with your with her email address. Thank you so much, Rachel. Um, now, I have a question. Martin, when a business goes to a lender for a loan, what causes a lender to contact USDA or SBA? Hmm. So, I don't, I don't know of a situation where a lender would, one of our lenders or, or a lender in our portfolio would, would want to contact USDA, but that, that possibly can very well exist. Um, it could be um, um, maybe a variety of ways of trying to put to, put together a package. Okay, you, you very well could go to come to US SBA and, and you may decide to go to um, USDA as, as well. It just it just depends. Um, we also have seen and we see this quite often where folks will come to us and they'll go to uh, maybe the state for, for funding such as the Virginia Small Business Financing Authority. Um, <clears throat> with pan with the uh, pandemic going on, there there there's more local funding available, and actually there there <clears throat> excuse me there are quite a few grants out there 
um, that are, are being made available considering um, the state of our economy and that we're trying to keep businesses going and we, we're trying to help them out as much as possible from a federal, state, and local level. Uh, uh, Laureate, uh, do you want to speak to that in reference to uh, USDA, a USDA lender contacting SBA lender? Do you have any insight you want to share with that? Uh, was that question, um, Martin, why would a lender contact either of us? Yes, what causes a lender to contact USDA or SBA? If I'm, okay. if I'm reading, if I'm understanding it correctly. Okay. Um, from what I have gathered when I was working in the BNI program, Lenders typically, and, and most of the lenders that work in our program are your, your smaller uh, banks. And it may be a loan that they, they are not just accustomed to. I mean, they may have, uh, you know, residential, car, small businesses, but someone may come into the, into, into the community and may want to put in a processing facility. So it may be a situation where the loan cash flows is collateral. It's a good loan, but the lender just may not be accustomed to that type of loan. So they would uh, prefer a guarantee that's going to cut the risk for them. Um, sure. Other instances I've seen, um, the loan may exceed their legal lending limit. And that part of the loan that's going to be guaranteed it does not count against that bank's uh, lending limit. Um, so they may come to us requesting a guarantee for matters such as that. And a lot of times, if it's just a new business, if it's a new business with no history, even though everything looks great now, they just may not have a history. And, um, you know, that's always a, a risk, a brand new startup business. So they would sure. also come to uh, to us for a guarantee, I would think, for that reason. Definitely. And that makes sense. And, and we get the same type of uh, scenarios. And let me just share with everyone that when you go before a lender, you want to make sure you have your story together. You have a business plan and you're able to articulate that story in such a way that that lender feels comfortable and confident that this is something that he or she wants to engage, meaning uh, w work the loan through the lending process. Um, if you don't have those, some of those elements together, uh, it's probably not going to be a very long conversation, number one, uh, and you're not going to get very far. So it's very important. And also let me share this with everyone. Through my professional experience, there are some lenders who they don't they're not interested in engaging in all types of loans so you may have some lenders that they are crazy about loaning money to um, farmers or they're crazy about loaning money to to uh, medical professionals such as doctor offices or dentist offices um, and they, they have their own niche so finding out what that lender likes to do is um, well, not likes to do, but what what arena they play in, or what playground they like to like to uh, play on, is very important because um, you're going to borrow, and in, in return, that that lender wants to make a profit because they're in the business of making money as well. So if you if you if they loan you a hundred dollars, they loan you one hundred dollars, they want back a hundred and twenty dollars. That's that's what it is, and that's what their interest is, and that's that's what they're their uh, requirements are. Uh, are there any other questions? SBA, FOM, credit, USDA rule development? Are there any other comments from Laureate or from you, uh, Rachel? This is Rachel, and I would just say as a lender, we do have a lot of programs and options, and also we do specialize in farm financing. So even if we don't wind up working with you, um, or if you're not ready to move forward with a purchase at this time, it definitely, I think, is worth reaching out to a local lender to establish a connection. 
Um, we can also put you in touch with some experts who might be a good resource for you as you're kind of starting your business or trying to put together a business plan. Um, we also partner with Virginia Tech and Virginia State and other universities um, to offer scholarships as well as other educational opportunities. So again, uh, you know, we're here as a resource, um, you know, even if you're not going to move forward with a loan, always just a good idea to establish a relationship and use us in whatever way is helpful for you. That's great, Rachel. And, and that's what I tell people to go talk to a lender um, with some preliminary thoughts and ideas just to learn how that, that, that playground area works. Um, and and that, that'll be greatly appreciated by any lender. If you sit down and have just a, a conversation, hey, I'm thinking about doing this. Can you just educate me on how it works? And that's, that's a great start because you don't want to go into a situation where you're cold. If there are no further questions, I want to thank our presenters. Hope everybody can hear me. I can hear you. Can you hear me? Okay, very good. <laughs> My internet gives me shaky results sometimes, but if there's no further questions, uh, I want to thank our presenters, Anne Short from SBA, Rachel Bell from Colonial Farm Credit, Gloria Tucker from Rural Development uh, for coming out and sharing the information with us. It's very <laughs> informative. I appreciate you sharing. Uh, we'll have another program September 10th, uh, USDA information session, September 10th, I believe at 10 o'clock. Uh, so look out for the flyers for that as well. I feel like giving a benediction now. If all hearts and minds are settled. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Mike. Day slides. Um, are you okay with sharing your slides, Mr. Short? I, I'm perfectly fine with that. I will do whatever. I'm sorry. I I got I got kicked off, or you know, it, it dropped off for me. I don't know what happened there, but that's that's the way things are sometimes. But I'm back. Very good. Better you than me this time. I <laughs> know <laughs> that's right. <laughs> <laughs> so, Mike, what I'll do is uh, I can send the slides to you and then you can send them out. Or do you want me to? I think I, I have a list. Send them to me and I'll send them out. And, uh, and Marcus just we'll said that this video will be available on YouTube as well. On our YouTube channel, as they format it and um, edit it, they'll put it up on the YouTube channel for the College of Agriculture at Virginia State. I didn't know that, Mike. I didn't know we were going to be on YouTube. I, I <laughs> wish you had given me some warning prior oh, to. Sorry, that. my, my, my makeup guy wasn't there for you. Yes, <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> Very good. Very good. We thank you all for your participation. Uh, we look forward to seeing you again on September 10th. Uh, and if, again, no other questions, please have a great day. Be safe and stay cool.